once again. And I ordinarily I just do you know one of these shows a week. I usually don't don't do a second or third show in a week. But you know this this GOP presidential race is really shaping up now, and uh, it's really hot and heavy now. We've had two primaries in the books, and we have South Carolina coming up Tuesday, and and I'm seeing a situation happening within that primary right now that is pretty important that I wanted to address. So I didn't think it could wait until next week. I wanted to go ahead and do this second show of the week or bonus show or whatever you want to call it in order to address a situation that I think is extremely important in order to make a personal plea to a couple of our remaining candidates that I think is supremely important. So I hope you'll indulge me in that regard. Now, before I make this personal plea to these candidates, and I know these, these guys don't know me from Adam, but hey, we, we live in an era of social media, we live in an era of the internet, so who knows? Maybe by putting this plea out there and these things going through Twitter and Facebook and all that, who knows? Maybe somebody associated with these guys will pass the word on. It's all we can hope for, right? So before I make this plea, I need to, to set this up a little bit. I need to, to set the stage for the situation we're in so that all of you understand exactly where I'm coming from. Now, for those of you who are not Republicans, maybe you're independent voters, maybe you're Democratic voters, there's a certain a certain part of the Republican mindset when it comes to uh, presidential candidates and when it comes to uh, you know electing people for, for public office in general, there's a certain part of that mindset that you might not thoroughly understand, that you might not thoroughly be aware of. Think about something for a second. Let, let's think about some of the more important democratic presidents of our time. Think to a, a Barack Obama who's in office now. You know, he ran for office in 2008 you know, he, he did it very much on, I've, I've said before, the rock star persona. This, this guy comes along and, and he is built up to be this next great leader. And he went out and he, and he got this electorate, he got this group of people to vote for him that really just got behind him and wanted to follow him and really felt like he would be the next great leader of America and maybe the next great leader of the world. And they would go to the ends of the earth for this guy. And they felt like Barack Obama was the guy who had all the answers if they would just follow him. And you look back a little further to Bill Clinton, he had a very similar type of appeal to, to the people that voted for him. Here's a guy that came right on television and said, I feel your pain. And these people just, just ate it up. They, they bought it hook, line, and sinker. And they would go to the ends of the earth for the guy. Clinton made them feel so good about themselves. He could identify with them. He could empathize with them. And they just wanted to follow him. And you go even further back to a John F. Kennedy, a, a guy who at the time in 1960 that he was elected, good-looking young guy who made people just feel so good about themselves, and he could lead America to the next great uh, era in its history, and you just wanted to follow him and get behind him. You see a common thread there that typically uh, Democrats, not all Democrats, but a lot of Democrats, a lot of leftists, even a lot of independents, are looking at a president for someone who can be their leader, for someone who they can follow. Now, I don't necessarily understand that mindset. I certainly don't agree with that mindset. But, you know, I, I'm smart enough to understand that it's a significant part of the Democratic makeup. That's a very important thing to them in who they select for presidential candidates, whether good, bad, or indifferent. It's something that, uh, that is very important to them. History would show but what a lot of people on that side don't understand is that when Republicans select a candidate, we're not necessarily looking for that. And throughout this, this process of these primaries, you know, I've heard people in the media or, or uh, different types of pundits come out and say, you know, the Republicans need that charismatic leader to come out and, and unify everybody. No, really we don't, or at least that's not what we want. Republicans, as strange as this sounds, Republicans are not looking for a leader. We're looking for more of a, of a spokesperson. You see, Republicans, generally speaking, you're talking about, about folks that you know, run their own businesses or uh, you know, take the bull by the horns in life and, and, and we're the, we're the self-reliance crowd. We're, we're the self-responsibility crowd. You know, we're the group of people that believe that you pull yourself up by your bootstraps and do it. So a part of that that goes un, unseen sometimes is that people in our, on our side of the aisle we feel like we're already our own leaders. We don't need someone to come along and lead us. We, we don't feel like we need to follow someone. We don't, heck, we feel like following someone is, is almost a sign of weakness, so we don't like to do it. Our 
relationship to a presidential candidate is much less of a follower to leader relationship and, and much more similar to something like a client to an attorney relationship in that we're looking for a spokesperson, we're looking for a representative, we're looking for someone to represent our concerns at the highest level. Not to tell us what those concerns should be, not to, not to tell us how we should feel about them. We're looking for someone who will take the brilliant ideas that we already have and just apply them on the bigger stage. So you have to understand that first and foremost about what we are looking for for president. We're not looking for a leader, we're looking for a spokesperson. Now, here's where that gets a little complicated in 2012. Unlike past years in the Republican Party, unlike in recent history, there are all sorts of changes going on within the party base, all sorts of different people coming into the party, all sorts of different ideas that are being talked about that were never really talked about before. When I go back to my parents' generation of Republicans, my grandparents' generation of Republicans, it was all pretty simple back then. You just had to come out with a candidate that was a good social conservative, was strong on national defense, and, and was good enough in terms of business that they could keep the economy going. And as long as you did that, pretty much all you need. You, if you had a candidate that, that fulfilled those areas, you could get the whole party around them and you could go forward. That's not really the case anymore. In terms of finding our spokesperson, where we're at right now is that while everybody in the party wants to beat Barack Obama, we all want to beat him for slightly different reasons. And so we all kind of have our pet issues right now. We all kind of have our, our different things that we want emphasized. And as such, we each seem to have different spokespeople that we would like to, to take over the, uh, the nomination of the party. There are different types of people represented in this party now than there ever have been in the past, and that's why you're seeing the conflict that you're seeing. And that leads to a problem that I'll tell you about in just a second, and that problem will then lead to my plea. Now, let's look at the situation. Suppose that you are one of the old school conservatives, that all you really want is just someone with an R after their name in the White House, someone who's good on business, Someone who has good hair, looks good in a suit, and won't, won't embarrass you on TV. If you want that person, if, if that's the type of Republican you are, then your spokesperson is going to be Mitt Romney. There's really not another choice for you. All the other potential choices that could have filled that role are out of the race. So you're a Romney guy. That's roughly 25 to 30%. On the other hand, what if you're one of the younger people who are taking an interest in Republican politics? Maybe you are a, a, a definite fiscally responsible person. You want fiscal responsibility to be the issue. But you're also anti-war, and you're also uh, either moderate to liberal on social issues. Well, if, if you fit that mold, then you too have your spokesperson. Your spokesperson is Ron Paul. And really, there's nobody else in the party who can fill the role of your spokesperson. You're a, you're a Paul person, and you're going you're gonna to stick behind him. Now, there's one more group, and it's the group that I'm in. Let's say you're in the group that is kind of a combination. You're a social conservative. You're also a fiscal conservative, and you know that we need to get our fiscal house in order. But you also, you're not anti-war, but you also, you also realize that we have to have some semblance of a foreign policy. We have to have some semblance of a strong military, and we do have to deal with our external threats around the world. Well, if you're in that mold, if you're in that group, and I feel that I'm in that group, then you're in a tough position because right now you have three potential spokespeople. You have Rick Santorum, you have Rick Perry, you have Newt Gingrich, and that's where the problem arises. The problem that our group is facing right now is that we're two states into this primary season, and you've seen the people that, you know, the old school Republicans, well, they've gotten behind Romney. Okay, well, Romney's won two states. And those younger folks who are pro-fiscal conservatism, but anti-social conservatism and anti-war, well, they're behind Ron Paul. But for the rest of us, our votes and our support are going in three different directions. And so our vote hasn't been enough to overtake Paul or Romney to this point because our vote is split so many ways. It's a very solid group of people that are out there, but we can't decide which guy to support. And so that's where I get to my plea right now because Frankly, if our support were all behind one person, if we coalesced behind one spokesperson for those combination conservatives or those hybrid conservatives, whatever you want to call them, strong on fiscal policy, strong on social conservatism, 
and strong on national defense. Those three things. If we got all of our support behind one person, then Romney would be in trouble. Then Paul would never get second place again in any of these primaries. So that's where I come to my plea. As I said earlier, Rick Santorum, Rick Perry, Newt Gingrich, they're kind of the three guys that are left who are battling for our support in that third group. So I'm going to make a plea to Rick Perry and Newt Gingrich. Because we've established that we need to get our group to coalesce around one guy, and that because the math works against us if we do not do so, and continues to give an advantage to Mitt Romney, who does not represent the majority of the party, but is able to take enough of the vote because the rest of us are split so many ways, because of that reason, I would humbly and politely ask Rick Perry and Newt Gingrich, gentlemen, please drop out of this race immediately. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything disrespectful to Perry or Gingrich. In Rick Perry's case, there's a lot, a lot of things I like about him. He's been a darn good governor of the state of Texas. I believe he is a social conservative. I've not always agreed with everything he's done, to be sure. But by and large, I, I think the guy would make largely a good president. But let's be honest about it. Rick Perry did have the opportunity, maybe more so than anyone, to grab our support, to grab that Tea Party support, to grab that social conservative support, and for whatever reason, it did not work out. Maybe it was the debate performances, maybe it was some of his answers on the illegal immigration uh, uh, thing with the, the tuition form, who knows. The bottom line is Perry had a great chance to take the ball over the goal line and he didn't get it done for whatever reason. And now enough damage has been done that I don't think Perry can recover from it. And hey, I know Rick Perry's had a great sense of humor about the whole thing and you know he's self-deprecating, he'll make fun of his own foibles on the, on the debate stage, and, and I guess that, that shows a bit of character to some extent, but the bottom line is, Rick, you just can't win this year. It's not a slight to you, I think you're a fine man, but you're not going to get it done. And the longer you stay in, the longer you hurt our chances, and by our, I'm not talking about Republicans, I'm talking about that combination conservative, social conservative, fiscal conservative, Strong national defense. That group of people. The longer you stay in this, Rick, the more you hurt us. Likewise, with Newt Gingrich, you got beat in Iowa. And, and I know that you feel that some dirty pool was played by Mitt Romney in Iowa. And, hey, I'm not going to disagree with you. And I know that you, you would like nothing more than to knock Romney out of this nomination. Hey, me too. I, I'm with you there. And I was actually encouraged at the end of the Iowa primary when, when you gave a speech that some people considered it, considered it a meltdown, but other people thought it was brilliant. And I'm one of the people who kind of thought it was brilliant. Where you basically praised Rick Santorum and, and, and you said that, you kind of hinted that there could be an alliance there. And, and at least me personally, I had this vision of, you know what, maybe Gingrich can't win this thing, but maybe he'll stay in the race long enough to kind of smear on me a little bit and Santorum can can rise above that, and maybe a good cop, bad cop sort of thing. I was really hopeful for that. I thought you could go balls to the wall against Romney on things like Romney Care and on the, the different things he's done with his lack of social conservatism, and I thought you could nail him. And even if it took you out of the race, which you were going to be out anyway, Santorum could benefit. That's what I was hopeful for. But the problem is, as the week has progressed, you did go after Romney, but not for that. You went after Romney for, frankly, the one thing that we actually respect him for. You went after him for his business acumen. You went after him for his business experience and his time at Bain Capital. Newt, the Republican Party has never been the party that would criticize somebody for making good business decisions. And God willing, we'll never be that party. Newt, I know you want Romney out of the running. I get it. But you're attacking him on the one thing that the rest of the party actually respects him for. It's so frustrating. Newt, you had a golden opportunity to damage him, and you missed it. 
and you, you've done something that, frankly, is almost impossible, you almost made Mitt Romney seem sympathetic, and I didn't think that was humanly possible. I find myself talking to people and, and, and chatting with people and actually defending Mitt Romney against you, and you have no idea how uncomfortable that makes me. Newt, you're doing more harm than good at this point. I know you're doing it for the right reasons, but frankly, you're doing the cause more harm than good. I understand that you want Romney out of this race. I understand that you want to pay him back for what he did to you. And you should want to do that. If I were in your position, I would want to do the same thing. I would want to take his ass out too. I would want to take from him the one thing he wants more than anything else in the world, and that's the presidency. But Newt, at this point, you know how you do that? You know how you really screw Mitt Romney over? You know how you deny him the White House? you drop out of the race. Because if you drop out of the race, and Rip Perry drops out of the race, now we can coalesce behind one guy, and we can kick Mitt Romney's ass in these primaries. The mathematics will tell you the story. As strange as it sounds, Newt, the best thing you can do if you truly want to deny Mitt Romney the White House which is a completely honorable goal, if you truly want to do that, Newt, the best thing you can do is sacrifice yourself so that Romney can be beaten. I know it's hard to hear, Newt, but you're not going to win this nomination. So if you're going to be out of this race, you might as well take Romney with you. The best way you can take Romney with you is to gracefully step aside and do whatever you can behind the scenes to help Rick Santorum. Because he's the one guy who has not been damaged by this primary process thus far. I know that there are issues you know, from previous elections and so forth, and a lot of people hate him because of his social, his social viewpoints. But, but in my estimation, the people that are hell-bent on voting against Rick Santorum because of his religion or his social stances, those are people that probably aren't going to vote for us anyway, so I'm not concerned about them. Santorum is the one guy left who can be our spokesperson and have a chance to win, and I think can win. If we can coalesce around one guy, one guy that still has a shot, we can destroy Romney. Ron Paul is so stagnant that he won't be hard to beat either. We can take this nomination. We can lead the Republican Party in the direction that we need it to go. We can lead it away from the country club conservatives who roll behind Romney. We can lead it away from the nut jobs who are good on, on fiscal policy like Ron Paul. And we can lead America to a place where we are more fiscally responsible, where the American family is, is intact, and where we again show dominance and a presence around the world and where our security is protected once again. That's where we need to go. And the one guy left that can do it is Rick Santorum. So, Mr. Perry, Mr. Gingrich, I implore you as a voter. I implore you as someone who wants to defeat Barack Obama. I implore you as someone who wants to undo every horrible thing that Barack Obama stands for. Please get out of the race so that we can achieve our goal. That's it for this week. We'll talk to you after the South Carolina primary. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.